very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom with the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, Prime Minister Frendel Stewart has denied he refused to meet with trade union leaders yesterday as they tried to present him with a letter outlining their concerns about the National Social Responsibility Levy. Brian Broom has that story. Mrs. Stewart said he was expecting one person to deliver the letter to him at Parliament, but when told that all the leaders wanted to be present, he agreed and waited for them to be shown to his office. Mrs. Stewart said he was under the assumption this message was delivered to them. I waited upstairs in my office at Parliament for upwards of one half of an hour for the persons who were to deliver the letter. When I inquired about the delay, I was told that the trade unionists were meeting with the leader of the opposition and that they would come to me afterwards. Subsequent to that, I got a follow-up message that the union leaders would leave the letter downstairs at Parliament because their police permission had imposed timelines which they did not want to breach. So it is not true to say that I refused to meet with the union leaders. On Monday afternoon, when the officer from the special branch was making me aware of this matter, in readily agreeing to receive the letter, I indicated that I saw nothing wrong with making myself available to the person who was going to hand the letter over. However, according to the Prime Minister, the police officer communicated on Tuesday that all the union leaders wanted to be present and he acquiesced to their request. The Prime Minister also underscored the importance he attached to the receiving of the letter. On Tuesday around 12.20 p.m., I got up and left the chamber while Minister of Finance Christopher Sinclair was speaking, a practice I don't ordinarily follow. I do not leave the chamber when my ministers are speaking, but I considered this occasion significant enough to justify my varying that practice. The Prime Minister stated that he has received and read the letter while reiterating his respect for the trade union movement. He pledged government's continued commitment to working with all stakeholders, including the trade unions, towards the well-being of citizens. Ryan Broom, CBC News. Thanks, Ryan. And now on to this bit of sad news. An elderly woman lost her life tragically today, struck by a truck as she walked along the Westmoreland intersection of Highway 2A. Rianne Phillips has more. Today's fatal accident is the latest one in just three months at this intersection on Highway 2A. On March 5th, Anderson Joseph was killed as he attempted to cross the road with his five-year-old son a few meters away. This time, however, 61-year-old Mary Downs was killed by a truck shortly after she disembarked a bus and was heading home. The white truck was coming up from down Royal as one well side. The, this truck here was on the street, coming, coming this way as it is now. But when the toilet hit, I don't know the girl is out the bus because she, I understand, she just got the minibus. But that truck there, the white truck, that like through the year. And this guy with the, the other truck, he still that truck real good because he didn't over the wall. And the beautiful thing they had children there at the um at this church doing um doing summer camp camping camping. And they said to myself, Oh Lord, I don't hope that truck don't go across that church here and they kill them children. But up to now I you know that the girl did, the girl did on the wall. Many spoke highly of the late Westmoreland resident. I am real, real, real saddened to hear about her death. Because she's a girl that she like this. She just lived on her. And she like this got some good reports and whatnot. But that was the end. I know Mary for a long time working at the factory, right? Slinging cane at Portville. That's it, no. In the wake of the accident, the police are advising motorists to be extra careful. I want to remind all road users of the importance of exercising due care and attention while using the road. We are about to become involved in the heightened crop over season and I want to urge all road users including pedestrians to, to exercise that heightened level of care and caution when they use the highways and the byways. Some residents also want to see some mechanisms such as traffic lights or a roundabout place at the junction. 
I would like to see a roundabout or lights, stop lights. Yeah. Yeah, cause even when you coming up on that junction, you gotta go put the extra two more eyes in your head to stop you from getting anything. Residents are hoping today's unfortunate circumstances will result in urgent action before another life is lost. Rian Phillips, CBC News. Thanks, Rian. And motorists are tonight being warned to exercise greater vigilance at intersections controlled by traffic lights across the island. It comes as a number of them in St. Michael and Christchurch have been operating on flash mode. Kareem Smith reports. Um, see These flashing signals at intersections across the country have been causing confusion for some motorists. And if not handled properly, Experts believe they could result in serious accidents. Over the past few days, Barbadians were left to use their own judgment when maneuvering these junctions. In a statement today, the Ministry of Transport and Work said they've started resetting traffic signals to make sure motorists are safe. However, road users have mixed feelings about having to face flashing signals at traffic lights. Who doesn't want to be? It keeps coming. You know, you find it unfair that one lane flows and they don't hold up for the other group of people. So it's just, you know, miserable. To me, it could go both ways. It all depends on the driver. You had any bad experiences yourself? No, not, not, not so far. I mean, you should use due care and attention, so it shouldn't be hard if they didn't have stop lights because if you are around about, there are no stop lights and you're supposed to use the same judgment, so it should, the same principle applies with the stop lights flashing. They take chances, occasioning harm to other people and themselves as well. So if you have traffic lights, make them work. I think they should move the lights completely, all together. A lot of them want moving. Outspoken president of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Charmaine Roland Bowen, explains what the signals actually mean. We know an amber light means that you can proceed with caution. You can continue slow down and proceed with caution. The red flashing light tells you you must stop and move when it is safe to do so. And while she agrees that there are both pros and cons to leaving lights on flashing mode, she isn't satisfied that enough is being done to provide a safe experience for road users. She believes some motorists are getting an unfair advantage over others. You will find that the red light people have to be pushy, you know, um, because no one is giving away to them. So it, it needs to be controlled. People need to be educated. Another major area of concern is the lack of care given to pedestrians at traffic signals. In a statement, MTW says its electronic unit has been set back by the unavailability of the necessary equipment for the lights to function properly. However, with parts now available, the unit today started its work on the signals. In the meantime, MTW is advising motorists to exercise extreme care and courtesy, and it apologizes for any inconvenience caused to road users. Kareem Smith, CBC News. And a word of advice for those planning on having a drink this crop over, get a designated driver. President of the Barbados Road Safety Association, Charmaine Roland Bowen, is also advising drivers to be mindful of other road users. We have managed to um, see an end to, or at least a break to um, where fatalities are concerned for the last two months. And we don't want, we wouldn't want to go back, you know, to how the year started. And, you know, please, you know, think of yourselves, think of your families, think of the other person. They also have families and think before you drink. In other news now, year after year, thousands of young people graduate from secondary and tertiary institutions equipped with one degree or another. But how many of them know what they want to do or how to achieve it? Well, Sharika Griffith takes a closer look. Meet 20-year-old Shanika Roach. She, like many other young people, has just completed a university degree and is now gaining hands-on experience in her chosen field, programming. But she wishes the on-the-job training was better matched to her specific career path. The transition from school to work was completely different and really drastic because all I do is code for the whole entire day. So in some aspects, yes, yeah, telling us how we need to behave, how we need to act, how we need to dress, but not really like preparing me mentally for the amount of work and the amount of concentration that I would need. 
At 21 years old, Kamal Whitehall holds a bachelor degree in architecture. He too is an intern, but in customer service, and he's determined to make the most of it. The job I currently have is is a way is way off from what I wanted to do, which is architecture. But it teaches me how to deal with persons on a daily basis because in the working world I have to interact with a lot of people. We continuously hear employers complain that young people lack the necessary work skills. Floor manager of Massey Store Warren, Susie Aline, says there's a noticeable difference when compared to school leavers of yesteryear. The young people entering now are more open. They have a lot more knowledge. The technology is out there, so they're coming with it quick with the theory part of it, but practical part is lacking. Before, the older ones may not have the theory, but they had the practical skills and they were willing to settle in and work. The Productivity Council continues to offer programs geared at addressing this problem, despite little help from Corporate Barbados. We're constantly trying every year to see how we can get Corporate Barbados involved in taking on one of the two of the young persons so that they can have a practical um, experience. What we try to do here in the program to make it practical is on the second day we do actual interviews and we bring in HR professionals from around the, the, the country, private and public sector, who will conduct the interviews with the participants and then give them feedback on how they've done in the interview and areas where they may need to improve or areas where they need to strengthen. Or Many of the young people who know what they want to do will find it easy to transition from school life into work life. But for those who still don't know, programs like the one put on by the Productivity Council will go a long way into pointing them in the right direction. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Thanks very much, Sharika, and a happy birthday to you as well. Well, a major overhaul of the education system is needed, particularly in the way young people are taught to find work. CBC's general manager, Doug Hoyt, believes this is becoming increasingly vital as new technologies continue to impact jobs. In addition to the many jobs that are being phased out because of technology, you understand how mechanization and, and, and fancy technology has done away with a lot of opportunities. Countless more jobs do not even exist yet. Those are things that you need to think about. And we must be wise enough to spot these new opportunities and guide you as young people in those directions. We need to prepare you to take up those new duties and accept the responsibilities when they eventually arise. Mr. Hoyt was speaking to more than two dozen young people at the start of a training workshop put on by the Productivity Council for the past 10 years. Until the necessary educational reform occurs, he says the task of preparing young people for the world of work must not be neglected. We do not need to wait for this shift in order to start teaching young people new rules of success every day in every forum and on every possible platform and channel available to us. It can be done in simple conversations or formalized programs as is being exemplified in these four workshops by the Productivity Council. A top tourism official has rejected the idea that industry players who benefit from significant government concessions should be asked to shoulder more of the economic burden. Hotelier and chairman of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated, Alvin Jemmett, believes that would be akin to applying brakes when you really want your vehicle to go faster. I think everyone agrees that it is the tourism industry that is carrying the burden of the country in terms of our economic growth. And uh, any impulse on the industry will very well stymie the growth that we are experiencing. And the question will be, do you want to stymie the growth that we are experiencing or do you want to encourage it? And I, I would hazard to guess that the answer will come down on the side of one would want to encourage growth. Mr. Jemmett believes that perspective often comes from a misunderstanding of the sector. I, I think that there are a lot of misconceptions about the level of profitability in the tourism industry and uh, I think greater understanding is needed so that people understand how this industry really really works. It's a high labor intensive industry, uh, a lot of the inputs into tourism are imported and uh, things change. When things change internationally 
they affect the tourism industry locally. And uh, so the, the misconception out there is that the tourism industry is running off with loads of cash from profits. And I don't think that's the case at all. There's more news coming up after this break, so stay tuned. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. We start with a yes. But when life takes unexpected turns, you can still say yes to more. The Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard credit card gives you points with every purchase that you can use to travel to anywhere. Plus, with just 20,000 Scotia points, you can say yes to destinations. With Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard credit card, it's easier to say yes to everything. Apply today. So, in an effort to test the credibility of this so-called speed spot, we have some random questions for you to answer. How quickly can you change clothes? The bag of groceries on the table. How fast can you guys prepare a meal? And go! All right. Which network gives you the speed you prefer and enjoy? Join the fastest team and shift your flow fiber broadband into high gear by upgrading now at no extra calls for three months. Plus, enjoy the best of Flow TV for free. Last question. Who's the fastest? I had to ask. Upgrade now. I have diabetes and every decision I make is important. I choose Glucerna to maintain a healthy nutrition. I drink it and recommend it to my patients. Glucerna with Carb Steady is designed for people with diabetes, helps minimize blood sugar spikes, and it's delicious. Glucerna, your good decision of the day. Acting Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Barbados, Michel Darlo, sits down with that institution's Public Affairs Officer, Noveline Brewster, to discuss the foreign exchange fee in a special program on CBC TV 8 on Wednesday, July the 12th at 8.30 p.m. Be sure to tune in. Summer is in full swing and children are certainly enjoying the vacation. Those who aren't at home have chosen from camps offering everything from sports to entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Well, this week, Denise Blackman speaks to the children who are spending their summer in a gully. Back to Nature isn't just the name of the camp, but it's also what Camp Director Deborah Branca hoped would happen when she introduced the camp 10 years ago in Welchman Hall Gully. I was thinking to do something with the environment, but then I realized that the environment is a little bit doom and gloom. It's always you know, about how to protect it opposed to enjoying it. And that's when I decided to go back to nature and now have kids run around, feel, touch, play and get involved with nature and then they're going to fall in love with it, they're going to have an empathy and then as they get older then they know why they're protecting it. She describes the camp as non-stop action filled with hiking, scavenger hunts, fishing and building. Of course the kids have their favorite activities and are making new friends. I may raise my friend, he was honoring my friend, I made a brock of my friend, I made crystal my friend and I made jack my friend. I love this camp because you can like feed the monkeys, they have a zip line um, and they have so much bases you can make and lots of bamboo that would help you. Play with my friends, go on the rope and go on the zip line and watch monkeys and do arts and crafts after lunch and hikes. Did you know yesterday I went in there and I caught so many fish? What, what type of fish did you catch? I, I had no clue. Just tadpoles I thought. Yeah, but I, I, I was so surprised I caught a water beetle. I look in the bucket, two water beetles in there. That's so much fun. Yes, and it's a toad in there. 
I'm and I'm wondering when I can I catch that thing. So I think that's shallow side right back there. There's so many cool things to learn here, and like I get to see my friends and we get to build um uh, many cool things. Like at one point we built a, hut, a little hut and stuff, and it was really fun. And every year we kind of do something a bit different. It's just really fun out here. You get to be with nature. It's a really beautiful place. But a camp in the middle of a gully might raise eyebrows for some parents. And Ms. Banker admits about 50% of campers are usually non-nationals. However, as the camp grows, she says local numbers are climbing to around 70% in what she sees as a good sign that Barbadian parents are recognizing the value of the nature camp, which is open to different groups this summer. This is my last week for July. Quite a few parents have been complaining to me, but it's actually my third week because I accommodate for some schools, but I will have three more weeks in August. The Welchman Hall Gully in St. Thomas also hosts the camp over Christmas and Easter. Denise Blackman, CBC News. Thanks, Denise. That looks like fun. As the crop over season moves into high gear, yet another call has been made for responsible behavior. It has come from the Chief Executive Officer of the National Cultural Foundation, Cranston Brown. He says the world's eyes are on Barbados and has told all stakeholders that protecting the festival should be priority number one. Republic Bank Grand Cadouman attracts international media attention, not to mention the increase in celebrity tourism over the past few years. The year before, before Kaduma was over, we were all over CNN as the celebrities were here and they marketed the parade and the festival to the world. This is why we continue to advocate for responsible behavior from all stakeholders during the festival, remembering that the image we portray is what people will take away. The things we say and do become a national concern affecting the country and this festival we so love. Barbados' potential in agriculture is waiting to be tapped and at least one chef believes much of the produce is still being underutilized. And this week, both local and international chefs took major steps to prove it. And from all indications, they've succeeded. Kareem Smith has that story. Sea parsley, wood sorrel and sea beans were just a few of the local foods reported by international chefs to be growing in Barbados. According to officials, the Arts of Cuisine hosted by the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association has given new life to the feeling that Barbadian soil has much more to offer than often meets the eye. Over the past week, a team of chefs led by Barbadian London-based chef Jason Howard went on an expedition to uncover the culinary treasures in Barbados. And Saturday night at Daphne's restaurant, they offered guests a five-course meal featuring only local produce many of it unfamiliar to ordinary Barbadians. But Chef Howard says it didn't start there. We went on the farms, we went down the bush, we went searching for the herbs, we went foraging, we went, we went everywhere. We went even to peg farms, and peg farms has such a, a, an amazing ecosystem that they were growing fennel. I never seen fennel growing Barbados, but they were growing fennel, and it shows that we can grow more stuff here. So we actually went in the bush. We got video footage of we in the bush, in the knee deep in mud to, to be just a, not not literally knee deep in mud but <laughs> deep in mud walking around hunting for stuff coming across new stuff and things so chef howard wants barbadians to use their experience as a wake-up call and as motivation to gain a better understanding of what the country has to offer part of the aim was finding new ideas for preparing the local lion fish which is having a negative impact on the local ecosystem this was executed in a dish called ceviche. Chairman of the BHTA, Roseanne Mara, says she met Chef Jason in London, where she tasted the most creative cuckoo and flying fish in her life. It was there that he posed the idea that would become the art of cuisine. So having a casual chat with him, he said to me, you know, I have an idea of something that I would like to do. I'd like to give back to Barbados. I'd like to come home. I have a number of friends who are chefs, top chefs, and we will do workshops and some training. I want to do something where we go out to farms because in England, he was saying, you don't get fresh produce.
also to go to the farms. I think that the friends that I have that are chefs will be very interested. And they never look back. Miami-based chef Jason Licker says the high quality of local produce will continue to stand out in his mind. It's great to come and remember what real food tastes like. It's, it's different. It really is. I mean, we were at somebody's hotel last night and we, and we put together with Kingfish and, they, and Jason made this salad. It was a couple right back and he goes into like the forest over here and just picks up stuff and like, oh, and then it was delicious. It was real food. Along with the discovery of new foods, Barbadian chefs got the chance to gain the skills necessary to make the most of local products. The feeling by tourism officials is that locals and tourists could see a more authentic local dining experience in the near future. Kareem Smith, CBC News. Thanks Kareem and we'll have news from the region after this break. Diamond Dazzler, it's time to play. Diamond Dazzler, the new instant $250,000 scratch game from the Barbados Lottery. Available at select lottery outlets. I have diabetes and nothing stops me because I decided to maintain my blood sugar spikes and weight in control. That's why I choose Glucerna Hunger Smart. It helps me manage hunger and minimize blood sugar spikes. Glucerna Hunger Smart has 15 grams of protein to help you manage hunger as part of your weight loss plan. Glucerna, your good decision of the day. When the crowds descend on Bushy Park for the big Soka Royale competitions, we will be there. When the social commentators in Kaiso face off for the Pickety Crop Finals, we will be there. CBC, capturing it and sharing it all with you on pay-per-view via MCTV or web stream on www.cropover.cbc.bb. CBC, your link to the festival. Looking for the best stage of the festival? It's the CBC Festival Stage, where the stars are sure to appear. Yes, I get a lot of crap. Okay. Listen, there are a lot of people that are recording that shouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. They should be sweeping the road, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Don't get on that because you hold a barbell and it's set Godon, that all of a sudden that Godon cannot be bashed. So okay, got a cross but over that into is, the main soccer but, but, but That sample corn them written from Jamaica. No, but your criteria, that make it bash so good. I am saying uh -huh. that when you look at the music of the years, it was never given an identity. Watch Festival Stage Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays live on CBC TV 8 from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Festival Stage is repeated on Mondays and Wednesdays at 9.03 p.m. and Fridays at 10.03 p.m. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. A St. Lucian government minister has resigned following reports that he was recently stopped and searched at the George Charles Airport. Senator Jimmy Henry was reportedly stopped at the airport and questioned about a large undisclosed sum of money in his possession. He was allegedly bound for Barbados. Senator Henry later made the announcement that he is stepping down from the Senate and as a minister with responsibility for agriculture with immediate effect. For reasons altogether personal, I have decided to tender my resignation with immediate effect from the Senate and as a minister. Due to these personal matters, at this time I am unable to give the attention necessary to my ministerial duties. I wish to thank my dedicated supporters in Denry North who have stood by me through thick and thin. His resignation was since accepted by Acting Prime Minister Ezekiel Joseph on behalf of Prime Minister Alan Shastny. Officials in Guyana say there could be as many as eight escaped prisoners on the run following the fire that destroyed the Camp Street prison over the weekend. Ayanna George reports. Prison authorities are now saying they are unable to account for eight prisoners. That's their way of saying that at least eight persons could be on the run. President Granger paid a visit to the remnants of the Camp Street Jail on Tuesday and declared that another similar facility will not be built there in the future. This is what um, was adequate maybe 120 years ago, but certainly it's not adequate now. We definitely have to go back to the drawing board to determine what type of facility we need. And um, I wouldn't like to prejudge the issue. I will discuss with the Minister of uh, Public Security and the Cabinet. But uh, we're not going to have the same type of facility here again. So we're 
I, that's as much as I can say at present. Um, the devastation here is almost total and um, we don't have any intention of rebuilding it as it was before. Over in Lusignan, a magistrate is at work in the prison and qualified prisoners are continuing to be set free. But the authorities have the facility under tight wraps and not much could be seen or heard. The promised significant infrastructural improvements have not materialized in the 24-hour period signaled by the Commissioner of Police on Monday. And the harsh conditions make the prisoners edgy. Shots were fired Tuesday afternoon to keep unruly prisoners in check. Some of the family members related the situation they are faced with. Things are going slow, 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 like everything is going to turtle back, you know. Because right now where they are, so, normally when I come here, they just put the food in the, the containers, just be out here, they just put the food in the container and you let them go away. Right now, the food is in the container, they are putting the food in the container, they are collecting the food, they are waiting till the food go in, they are waiting till they don't empty the container. The police in Jamaica are probing the contract-style killing of well-known corporate area businessman Richard Ramdial, whose family operates Ramdial Auto Sales and Accessories. He was shot along Ruth Ven Road yesterday afternoon. The police report that shortly before 5 in the evening, two men alighted from a white Toyota car and opened fire on Ramdial as he drove by. Ramdial was shot several times in the upper body and he was pronounced dead at the hospital. The gunmen fled the scene. Across the Caribbean, brought to you by CIBC First Caribbean. A peek into the world of sports is just ahead, but first, here is a tip from Cooperators General Insurance. This tip of the day is brought to you by Cooperators General Insurance Company Limited. Insurance the way you want it to be. It is advisable for homeowners to protect their investment by effecting appropriate home insurance coverage during the hurricane season. Cooperators General Insurance, helping you to be prepared this hurricane season.